Today we're going to make hot apple cider and we're going to make it with our kombucha starter. And that's going to lead to a few different changes because if you make apple cider by itself, it's usually about three weeks before you have it in the bottle and ready to go. And then if you add hopping to it, it's probably another seven days. I've seen recipes take as long as six weeks. Whereas with our kombucha, it's going to be probably closer to the 10 to 14 day range. Uh, and the other difference there is going to be that the yeast you would use in a apple cider is traditionally a single strain that's fairly neutral flavored. Um, with ours, we've got a just wild variety of nonsense. Who knows what flavors that's going to produce? Even between different kombucha batches, it could taste different because there's going to be a different makeup of yeast organisms inside. Uh, and one of the problems I've had in the past with using pure fruit juice or beer wort in my primary fermentation is with the yeast. They reproduce a little bit too much, it gets a little cloudy, and they start to produce funky, yeasty off flavors that are not welcome. With our beer wort, it was kind of a sour pineapple. And then with our grape juice, it was just kind of a dusky, dank sort of smell. It was quite unpleasant. But I think that's because I've always combined it with my full six bags of black tea. Since the yeast are going to use the tannins and caffeine as nutrients, I think that they had tannins in the fruit juice, tannins and caffeine in the tea, and they just overproduced. So this time I'm going to try and dial that back. And I'm starting with 100% apple juice. This is 45% sugar. I tend to use 200 grams of sugar in my brews, so that means I need... 14.8 ounces. So I'm going to add this to my fermenter. And just because I like the idea of having tea in my fermented tea, I've uh, steeped one bag here. Just so that there is a little caffeine since that is used there. It also helps us just avoid an existential crisis here because if cider's brewed with just yeast, kombucha's fermented tea, where would that leave us if we're just fermenting apple juice with bacteria and yeast? Now we don't have to worry about that. To this, I'm adding two cups of our kombucha starter. And then I'm topping it off to the one gallon mark with water. Uh, and that's it for now. Uh, it does look much lighter than kombucha usually does. Uh, it kind of looks like finished kombucha. But we will just keep tasting it, probably start trying it at about five days, and then we can start to talk about hopping it. Seven days have passed, so we are going to try our cider again. It's been tasting pretty close, but let's see. Pretty acidic. And one thing that I found surprising is that with plain black kombucha, it usually tastes very much like apple cider. It's the most prominent flavor. But when we're actually making an apple cider here, at least with our kombucha scoby, uh, it doesn't taste like that. It tastes kind of like baked apple. Apple pie is what comes to my mind, uh, just without the spices. Sour, but distinctly baked apple. So now that that's ready, I'm going to take out our pellicle here. And now we're ready to add our hops. Uh, in this case, I'm using citra hops, which have a pretty neutral flavor, but uh, a lot of citrus aroma. And I'm using these in pellet format because uh, it's usually what's widely available. And there's a few different ways I can go about adding this hop flavor. I could add it directly to the bottle, but uh, I think it would get a little over carbonated. But I think I want this to sit in the kombucha for a long time. And I think if I let it sit in the bottle that whole time, it would get a little too over carbonated. So I think what I'm going to do is something similar to a three-stage fermentation, where you would make your primary fermentation, where you actually make the kombucha, and then instead of flavoring and carbonating directly in the bottle, we're going to first flavor it in the refrigerator, let that steep, and then we're going to bottle and try and get some carbonation. So I'm going to add seven grams of citra hops. I am going to cover this, because I don't want all the aerobic fermentation processes to be going on. And then I'm just going to let this sit in the fridge for seven days before I give it another taste. I might open it up and stir it a couple times, but once that flavor is pretty prominent, I think it'll be ready to bottle. Then we'll just have to decide how much sugar we want to add. So uh, we'll meet back here in a week. After three days, 
this is tasting pretty hoppy. Then more unusually, it's tasting a little sweeter than it did before as well. There's still some acidity, but uh, a lot of that apple flavor, especially that baked apple flavor, is kind of lost. But at least our, our citra hops are coming through. And it's not bitter at all since we didn't boil the hops. Since we just threw them in and let them steep in the refrigerator, it's only really the uh, aroma of the hops that came through. So I think we're ready to bottle. But before we bottle, I want to strain this uh, because if the hops are allowed to sit, they're going to continue to add that flavor. Uh, and I'm going to use both a strainer and a microfiber cloth just to make sure we get all of it out. Let's see how this goes. Just to check how that's still tasting. Sweet, sour, still get some of that hops notes. Uh, so I think it's pretty good. Uh, but then we have to think about how we want to flavor these bottles. Uh, and I've got a few different ideas. So we're just going to test some things as I think of them. Firstly, since uh, it's already kind of a little bit sweeter than I would like, I think I'm just going to bottle it straight. Once it's finished carbonating, it should be a little bit more sour. Uh, and hopefully that gets us just where we want it. So that's bottle number one. And next up, since our hops covered up a lot of that subtle apple flavor, uh, I want to add a little bit more of our apple juice back to it. It should provide a little bit more acid and hopefully some apple flavor. But since I don't know how much apple flavor I want to add, I'm going to try and make a test batch here first. I'm going to start by adding 15 grams of our apple juice. I think that tastes pretty good. It's uh, still a little sweet. It's not too sweet. There's more apple flavor. There's still the hops. There's good a bite of sourness. Uh, I think that'll be pretty good. That's bottle number two. And then for our last experiment here, I'm going to add uh, the same volume of simple syrup, so 15 grams. And just since the whole point here was to ferment the apple juice and produce those cider flavors, we don't really want to cover that up by adding fresh apple juice. At least, maybe we don't. So that is our third experiment. But for now, I'm just going to let these carbonate for three days at about 85 degrees Fahrenheit. Uh, and then we should be ready to test again. So I will see you then. So I let these carbonate for 55 hours at 80 degrees Fahrenheit. We'll see how these are. I'm going to start with our unsweetened bottle, which was probably a mistake, but... Let's see. It still smells very much like hops and nothing else. It smells like an IPA. And it kind of tastes like an IPA, too. Uh, since we added the hops at the very end and we didn't boil them, not much of that bitterness came through, but uh, some of it did. There's still a lot of sweetness there, though. I don't think I get much of the apple cider taste. I don't really get much of a kombucha taste. There's some sourness, but uh, mostly just very hopsy. I think I would want less hops. Perhaps just a day or so would have been enough. Because it's a little too strong and it kind of masks everything else. But that is why we added more apple juice in the next batch. So let's give that a try. This is very drinkable, though. But I feel like I've already blown up my palate. Next up, we've got our bottle where we've added more concentrated apple juice. And I feel like this one might explode, so I'm going to be a little bit more careful. No, it's fine. There's been okay carbonation here so far. 
not as predominantly hoppy. Or I've lost my ability to taste hops. It is a little sweeter, but it's not distinctly apple -y sweeter. Otherwise, there's still some of that hops aroma. There's a little bitterness. Uh, and then it just kind of swings sweet and sour at the end there. Yeah, not bad, but I don't know if that's better. I think it might be getting a little too sweet. Let me try our last to see if it's any different. can taste some yeasty off notes, too, just on the back end. Uh, this is our plain white sugar edition. Smells hoppier than our apple version. Sweeter than our apple version, since it does have more sugar. And also a little bit more sour, a little bit more flavor. I'm going to try it against our original. Original, simple syrup. This one smells yeastier. This one's very bitter, hop forward, sour, kind of thin tasting too. This one's richer. Uh, the hops are a little bit subdued. There's not as much sourness. I think I like this better for a hopped apple cider. I just don't think it's distinctly apple cidery. I kind of feel like a plain kombucha with a lot less hops or hops for less time would be the better choice. Uh, so, the uh, original and sweetened is kind of undrinkable in comparison. Not my favorite. Probably wouldn't make any of this uh, ever again, but uh, I do like adding the hops because it does give you something a little similar to beer. It does add some fun variety. Uh, plus now I just have a bunch of hops, so I may as well throw it into something. I would say lessons learned here. I just don't use apple juice in your primary fermentation. It doesn't work as well. It gets a little yeasty. It's more expensive. Uh, throws off the timing a little bit, and it just doesn't have all the micronutrients that your SCOBY's going to need. So, at least for me, this would be a pass. So, thank you for joining us. This is Reckless Booch. <laughs>